Okay, get started. Everybody's? Hear things? I, I thought it came from like the hallway. A beat? Yeah. I thought it, I heard yeah. a beat, but I thought it was coming from over there. It happened when you pushed the Oh, button. right. That was me. That was my fault. Okay. Um, so we want to solve the equation for x. We want to isolate, or not x, y. We want to solve for y, uh, which means get y by itself. Keep in mind, in these uh, equations, you're not going to find out that y is equal to a number. That's not going to happen. Um, because in order to know what y is, you have to know what x is, and you haven't been told what x is. Okay? And we're not looking for specific solutions. I had a, an Algebra 1 student, a pretty, uh, a pretty bright one, ask me for this one. Could you just put 0 in for x and 0 in for y? Now, would that be a solution? How do you know? It works. If it's zero, 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 this is three zeros added up, you get zero. Right? That does work. But we're not looking for specific numbers. Okay? Though that specific combination of two numbers for x and y does work. Uh, what we're looking for, really, in the end, uh, is ways to find other solutions. Because zero, zero is easy enough to guess, but can you, know, can you guess another solution? You know, another x and another y that works? It also comes up to zero, that's a little harder. And then if you find a second one, it's harder to find a third one, right? What we have in the end, though, when we solve for y, and y equals, you know, a bunch of stuff over here with x's floating around in it, is a thing we can plug x into and find out what y would have to be. We have a way to find an infinite number of solutions by plugging in whatever x we want and getting out the y's that we would have to, to get in that situation. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna get y by itself. We're gonna isolate y. What's something we could do to begin that process? What are we doing? This one right here. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. Subtract so different x. Yes. What? Divide by four. Okay. So the. The process that we're going to follow to isolate y or whatever variable it is they're asking for, it's going to be very similar, okay? And usually, the very last step that we take before we're done is going to be there's a number or a something, a quantity of some kind, times y, and we're going to divide away that quantity. Right? And then the step before that will probably be getting it so that there is just one y term with a quantity times y. Uh, and so we can kind of extrapolate from there the steps that we would have to take. So keep that in mind. We're dividing by four. This is going to be a really common thing, dividing things, the coefficient of y, dividing that thing away from the y. y now equals 9 minus 15x over 4. Um, we can also write this, 9 fourths minus 15 fourths x, or 9 fourths minus 15x over 4, or we can write lots of different things. This is two fractions. The reason why I, I take time to write this down is just to remind us that this is dividing 9 and negative 15x. It's dividing both of them. It can't divide just one of them. It divides everything in the numerator. Right. And if we look at it this way, it's really two fractions that have the, a common denominator, which we could put together, and this is what it would look like if we put those two together. Okay. The thing I'm, I am predicting is that at least one person but uh, definitely more than just one is going to want to cancel things out when you cannot do that. It's going to come up a lot. And I'm going to remind you of what I just said, that the denominator is dividing everything in the numerator. You have to respect that. All right, so again, we're trying to get y by itself. So everything that's not y, we would like to not have it on the side with y. Right? So we want to cancel it out. What can, we, what can we cancel out that's not a y? Yeah? Add a 3x. OK, that's not anything we're concerned with. We don't care about it. So just to remove it from this side, that would be great. So xy equals 40 plus 3x. All right. Divide by x. Divide by x. This is what I was just saying. It's very much like this step here. We divide by 4 because that's the coefficient of y. And to, divide, or to uh, cancel out that coefficient, we divide. We're going to divide by that coefficient of y again. Divide by x. y equals 40 plus 3x over x. 
Can you simplify the answer at all? If I see this, I'm very happy because no, you can't. What might someone think they could do? What might they be tempted to do? Cross out the X's. Can someone explain why you cannot cross out those X's? You can multiply 3 by x to get 3x, no. but you can't multiply something to get 40 plus 3x, right? You have to multiply x times something to get 40 plus 3x there. Or we could recognize that this would be equivalent to writing uh, 40 over x plus 3x over x. Now, in this fraction, we can cancel out x's if we want to, and that could be 3. But this would have to be 40 over x still. This still needs to get divided by x, right? That's, uh, that still has to happen. And if we mistakenly cross out this x and just get 40 plus 3, well now, we've really done it. We've really done a bad thing. Yes? So is there, like, real answer, 40 plus 3x over x? Like, or do you think? Well, they'll be the same. They'll give you the same thing, right? Well, so then why are you making the things you did above? Are they like number 10? Uh huh. And not the same. And not be what? And like, like why did we have to do 9 over 4 minus 15x? Oh, you don't have to do it. What I'm saying is, these are just equivalent. Oh, okay. Yeah. This yeah. is good. This is good. Any other thing that's equivalent is good. Okay. I'm a big proponent of the correct thing is the correct thing. Like if, if your answer is equivalent to, to the correct answer, then I can't argue with it. Even when I rail against converting fractions into decimals, because it's just this fear of decimals that causes you to do that, or fear of fractions that causes you to do that. Uh, if you put 0.5 and the answer is 1 half, and I was expecting to see a 1 half, but I see 0.5, I can't argue with you because it's exactly the same. And so if your answer is equivalent to my answer, but if you write 0.3 and the answer is 1 third, then you will start losing some credit because that's not exactly right. So either way, this way or that way, this way or that way, those answers are either one fine. All right, here is the, the big daddy equation. challenge to it. The first thing that we want to do is the same thing that we do uh, in what do we do in this step? What step did, or what do we do in the in the first step here? Subtracted the x. Subtracted 15x because 15x that's an x thing. That, that is not even close to being what I want to solve for. It's got an x in it, it's got a 15, it doesn't have any y's. Let's just get it off that side. Same thing over here. This thing doesn't have any y's in it. We don't care about it. Okay? So what would probably be the most efficient thing to do first? Subtract 4x. Subtract 4x. It's got this thing. It has nothing to do with y. I don't want it to be on the side with y, because that's the thing that I want to solve for. So we get 7y plus 5xy equals negative 4x. Okay. Yeah, Michael? Factor the y out. Factor the y out. Now, does that sound like a familiar thing to do? You guys know that from geometry and algebra? Yeah. Do you guys factor common terms out? Yes or no? Yeah, so you did that. In algebra, algebra one, or geometry, you did that. Yes? Okay. Who's, raise your hand if that sounds familiar, factoring a thing out of an expression. It doesn't sound familiar. Represent yourself. It doesn't sound familiar? Michael, you're the one who just said to do it. Well, that's because you taught it last time. OK. So who thinks it's familiar from a previous class? It's familiar from a previous class. Who says it's not familiar from a previous class? OK. All right. So I believe either one of you. I, that, that kind of stuff should come up briefly. Maybe like towards the three quarters of the way through the year, and, and 
and didn't dive into too deeply. Okay. So I'm going to just do what Michael said and factor out the y, and I'll explain what that means okay, and why we would do that. Okay. Or Michael, you explain to me what it looks like to factor out the y. Uh, y parentheses 7 plus 5x. Okay. What, is, how, what, what's the, what is the proof that that's okay to do? That that's equivalent to what we just had? Makes me feel better about so this. If you the y, then you just have same thing. Yeah, if you distribute the y, you'll get 7y plus 5x. It doesn't matter that y is on the left side, does it? No, it should be on the left side. Okay, because multiplication is commutative. Okay, um, so before, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll work with this more formally as factoring out, but is there anybody who wants to dive deeper and have this explained and why we did it and how we can do it and that kind of thing? Do you have any questions about it? Okay. Uh, remember what it says up here on the orange paper? That's, that's my favorite one. That's why it's near me all the time here in class. Asking questions is really important. It's the most significant thing you can do to advocate for your own education is to ask a question. Okay? Um, all right, so we, f we did what's called you know, officially factoring out the y. Okay? Or another way that we thought of it in, uh, in last time's class was we're just combining the coefficients of y. Right? Here's a coefficient of y. 7 times y. And here's another coefficient, 5x times y. And when we have like terms, we add together the coefficients. There we go, we add together the coefficients, 7 plus 5x. That's what we would do. We would add those two together, and that would be the new coefficient of y. And that's what we have going on. It equals negative 4x. Right? So what we really just did is like collect like terms. It's kind of a, a, a thing that we did right there. So usually when we collect like terms, we're ready to do what in the next step? Uh, divide both sides, you say? Oh, I thought you said divide multiply. I got a little confused. Oh, divide or multiply. Well, what do we do here? We, we want y, right? We don't want this. Divide. We're going to divide. So we got y times 7 plus 5x. So if we divide by a factor of 7 plus 5x, since the numerator and denominator have common factors, you can cancel those common factors out and do the same thing on both sides. And now we have y equals negative 4x over 7 plus 5x. Okay. So we just talked a, a minute ago, if we put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, it works. Right? That's one specific solution to this equation. But now that we've solved for y, if we have a way to find just an infinite number of solutions very easily. What do I have to do in order to find a new solution? Yeah? Can you like just guess and check? Yeah, guess, well it's not even checking, it's just like, and it's not even guessing, because there's not, you can't do it wrong, right? Unless you pick an x and a y, before you do any math, you just say, I'll pick one for x and two for y. That might not necessarily work. But if I just pick one for x, and I do all the math right here on this side, that'll tell me what y would have to be, and that would be another solution. Put in 2 for x, put in 3 for x, put in 0.7396 for x, and figure out what y would have to be, right? Now we have this way to find an infinite number of solutions. And that's what we call a function. That's what this is. This is a function of x. and graph the solution. Is there anything different about solving inequality as compared to solving an equation? The steps looking different? No. No. It's still what is like the, the overarching algebra rule for solving equations and inequalities. You do it on one side. Do it on one side, do it to the other side. Yes, exactly. Okay. Not because it's magic and not because we've always been told to. Remember the scales? If both sides are going to remain equal, you've got to do the same thing to both sides. If both sides are going to remain unbalanced, you've got to do the same thing to both sides, and then you can throw off that unbalance. Okay? 
Um, all right, so what first? What did you do first? Because we track to four. Subtract to four. OK, subtract four, subtract four, 14. Uh, can we do two things at once? Yeah. Save for ourselves some time. So we subtract four. Yeah. Uh, subtract two x. That's just what we would do if we wrote down that next step anyway, right? So we get 7x. 7x is greater than or equal to 14, and then? Divide by 7. Divide by 7. 2 is less than or equal to x, or x is greater than or equal to 2. We can show it on a graph. We say 0, 2. What do we do at 2? Build a dot because? Because we got that equal to? This would be if you can't get to 2. If getting to 2 would cause this inequality to be false, then we can't uh, get to 2 with even open circle. But if we get to 2, that's OK. Still is true. Can fill that in. And then shade to the right. We shade to the right because x is on the right of 2, right? That's not why? Because it's what? Because it's greater than whether I write it like that or I write it like this. It's still saying the same thing. But now we have this uh, inequality, and it's actually, how many inequalities are we looking at? Two of them, right? We're just conveniently writing them smushed together because it takes less ink and less time to write down. Um, but if we were to cover up this inequality, we'd have that one, and how would we solve that one? Yeah? Track four from both sides, track four from both sides. Negative x is less than or equal to negative 1. Divide by negative 1. We get positive x and positive 1. Flip that sign. So we solve that inequality. Well, the steps that we took to uh, isolate x here on this side are the same steps that we take to isolate x in, if we cancel that out, with that inequality. Cover up this inequality and solve this one. We still subtract 4, so we subtract 4 here. We get negative 7. Negative x is greater than negative 7. We divide by negative 1. We get positive x is greater than positive 7. Except for, except for what? Didn't flip the sign. Gotta flip the sign. So x needs to be less than. And typically, when that happens, we like to write things down from least to greatest. And if you'll notice, that's, that's how it's written. If we write it down like this, it just feels better. Feel a little more peaceful when we write it that way. It's not right or wrong. It's just that's how we like to look at it, maybe. And if we graph it, that uh, 1 is here. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 7. There's 0 there. And at one, we put what? Fill in the circle for that equals two at seven. Open, Open circle. Can't get to seven. If we get to seven, this will be false. If this is seven, seven is not less than seven. It will be false. And then we shade in between. What kind of inequality is this called when you have two of them in the same place? Compound, compound inequality is called an and compound. Can you explain why it's an and compound inequality as opposed to an or compound inequality? Michael? So you can have anything in between those two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything in between that works, right? For both, both inequalities. So if a number is, say, right there, it's one number, it's it meets this condition, right? This one, and this one at the same time. One number does both of those things. That's what you say. But or would be we're shading on opposite sides, and this one number can't do both those jobs. It can do one or it can be the other, but it can't be both most often. Um, questions from the quiz? Questions from the homework? Yes. Um, number 
we're going to solve this equation for y. Okay. Let's, let's like set up a set of steps that would work whether we have 2x or we have, uh, let's say, say 2y or we have xy or we have 5xy. Whatever coefficient we have out in front of y or whatever we're going to solve for, this will always work. At the, at the end, let's say the last step, Let's use that last step, the step just before you have y equals? Division. What's that? Division. Divide, right? Divide out the coefficient. So you divide out that coefficient. Well, that means that you have only one term for y, one y term with one coefficient, which means just before that you might need to do what? Combine like terms. Okay. Well, sometimes your your terms that you want to combine are on different sides of the equation, right? So what do you have to do just before that? Subtraction or addition or something like that to get all of them on the same time on the same side, right? So uh, get all. Um, unknowns, uh, let's say desired unknowns, on one side, okay? And that, that pretty much covers it. Because that, that would also include getting things that aren't your desired variable to the other side, right? You don't want those. If you're trying to solve for y, you want to get all the x stuff, or anything that doesn't have a y in it to the other side. Okay, so keeping that in mind, are we able to divide out the coefficient right now? Can we just jump to that step? Is that ready? No. Can we just combine like terms? They're just sitting there ready to combine. No, we're probably right here. Get all the unknowns, the desired unknowns on one side. So what's that going to look like? Is that, that Michael? Minus y. Minus y on both sides. X, y, minus y equals x. Now look, that's what we did. We got them all on one side. There's no more to do. We don't have to get rid of things. It's, they're all on one side. So we combine like terms. What's that look like to combine like terms in this scenario? Yeah. Just factor the y out again. Factor out the y. We could even make that a, a parenthetical statement here. Uh, factor uh, out. We'll just we'll just say factor out. We'll we'll just assume we, we get what we're saying. All right. Factor out what? Factor out that that thing you're solving for. Factor out the y. Okay. Somebody other than Michael, what will it look like when we factor out that y? Remember the test to see if you did it right? Garrett? You're the one who said it last time. What did you say? How do we know we factored it out correctly? It's on the outside of the parentheses. It's on the outside of the parentheses, and what can we do with that to check and make sure we did it right? Distribute it. Distribute it, right? So keep that in mind. What is it going to look like when we factor out the y then? x minus x minus y. x minus y? With a y on the outside? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Okay. That's not bad. Uh, we'll get y times x, right? y times x, x times y, same thing. But what will we get when we multiply y times y? y squared. y squared. What do we need to multiply by instead to get y? Just a 1. Okay, so almost had it. Just going to fix it a little bit. Put a 1 there. Equals x. All right, we just combined like terms, or we factored out that y. And lastly, Michael. Divide by x minus 1. x minus 1, divide by x minus 1. y equals x over x minus 1. There it is. Look at that. What we have here's a formula for finding solutions. Give me an x, I'll plug x in, and then tell you what y would have to be. And then we'll have an x and a y that works in the original equation. Do you have a question? Can we do 30? Yep, we can do 30. Yeah, it's a choppy. Okay. Now, asking this question, how do we do 30? Great question. 
Okay? Better to ask it than to not. Even better than asking this question is uh, having worked on this problem maybe for even 10 or 15 minutes. Right? Spending that long on one problem, trying anything. Right? Even, even just staring at it and, and really giving it some thought, not blankly staring at it, but really thoughtfully looking at this problem, better than just asking the question. Okay? And of course the best would be feeling like you don't know how to do it, trying a bunch of stuff, and oh my gosh, I, I actually did it, right? I actually got Y by itself. Right? That'd be the best, that's the best way to learn. If I just take you, just cold, you know, haven't even seen this, haven't even paid attention to this problem, and just show you how to do it, you'll think, oh, I know how to do that now. But you won't, right, most likely know how to do something like this. The thing that a problem like this challenges us to is we don't have like a real approach here. We don't have a set of steps uh, that, that we can just follow. Right? Even this, this is kind of breaking down when we come to a problem like this. Right? Now we need to see what the problem is. What is the issue with this equation as we try to solve for y that's, that's the new challenge that's unlike other problems that we've had? We have fractions. Yes, fractions is, uh, is, is a challenge, but I would say if we had like, um, you know, x over, or y over 2 and, and maybe 3 fourths y here and, and fractions were involved, that wouldn't be too bad because then we would just, when we factored out, we would just wind up with fractions inside here. That wouldn't be too bad. It's not just that they're fractions, but what about particularly this fraction? What's really causing the problem? Michael? Why does it have a coefficient? Mm, it has a coefficient of one. Okay, so we're, at, we're trying to add together that don't have the same denominator. And also, where is y? It's in the denominator, right? That's a new one. It's the only problem on your own work that was like that, I think. That y is another number. You've got to figure out what in the world are we going to do about this. So a, a, a good thing to do is to recognize that. The, the, the first problem that I have is that y is in the denominator. Can I solve it? Can I figure a solution to that, getting y to be not in the denominator. Maybe y can be in lots of other places. Being in the denominator is a real bummer. So how can we cancel out that denominator? Or what can we do? What's an idea? Or if, if that's not what we did, what's something you tried? What's a, what is a, an approach that you took? Multiplied x by its reciprocal. So you multiply this by x? Okay, so I'll multiply by x. Is your idea? Okay? So you multiply this side by x, we multiply this side by x. Keep in mind, we're multiplying the entire side by x, not just one part of it. That doesn't work, right? Remember the, the scale has two pans. You can't just multiply one pan by five and not the other. So we multiply this, we, we distribute it, so we get x times 1 over x plus x times 1 over y equals x. What next? What happens when you multiply x by 1 over x? You got x in the numerator, canceling with x in the denominator. Okay. You're multiplying this by its multiplicative inverse. This becomes 1. Plus, well, if you multiply this straight across, you just get x over y. Nothing cancels there. And then we get equal to x. Not bad. Michael? Subtract 1. Subtract 1. x over y equals x minus 1. Now, we do kind of have y by itself, but it's, it's with x. Multiply by x again. OK, let's see what happens when we do that. Multiply this side by x. Multiply this side by x. 
Okay, so we have x, x over 1 times x over y. What's x times x? x squared over y. Does that have the, the effect you thought it would? No, OK. We're, we're trying to cancel out that x. That, that didn't quite work. Yeah? Multiply by 1 over x. 1 over x. So we were, we were onto something there. If we multiply this by 1 over x, then these x's will cancel. And at least we have just y, no other variables on that side. So that's good. Then we can write this over 1, so x minus 1 over x. It's like we have it. It's almost like we have it. But it's, it's like upside down, right? Almost. Because if it was y over 1, that would be great. That would, we'd be done. But it's 1 over y. What do we do? So by zero over one, then we're gonna well, that's gonna be zero. And you multiply things by zero, you get zero. So we get we get zero equals zero, which is true. But then you know we didn't figure out what y was. Did you just do times one? Multiply by one. If we just multiply by the number one, then then nothing will change, right? Multiply five by one, you just left with five. Sometimes multiply by one is the, the thing you want to do, but you multi usually multiply by like x over x or 5 over 5 or something like that, like getting common denominators. Um, there it is. Any more ideas? Let's, let's look at this. Three fourths. Does three fourths equal nine twelfths? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm showing you this to help you with this because this is a fraction equal to a fraction. Um, what would I like to do with this fraction? I'd like to do this so it's just y over no. one instead of one over y. No. And I don't mean like a math thing. I just mean what would you like to physically do with this fraction? Flip it. Erase, erase, erase the one and just make it y, right? Or flip it over so it's y over one. Okay. Well, let's think of it. Could we flip? That's a weird thing. Could we flip one side over? Let's see. What if we looked at this fraction? We flip this fraction over. Four thirds. What if we flip the twelve over nine and they still be equal? Wouldn't they? 3 over 4 equals 9 over 12, and 4 over 3 equals 12 over 9. It's the same ratio, mm -hmm. just the reciprocal, right? So do you, do you believe that that works for all fractions? No. No? Yeah. Well, what we're really saying is, in essence, like this would simplify down to 3 over 4, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So 3 over 4 equals 3 over 4, wouldn't 4 over 3 equal 4 over 3? Right? And when we're saying two fractions are equal, that's really what we're saying is, uh, in some way, the numerator is equal to the numerator, and the denominator is equal to the denominator. Right? Um, <coughs> in a way, in a sense. Um, so if we flip it over, then the reciprocal should be the should also be equal to each other. So we get y over one equals x over x minus one. We could also, if we, if we don't feel too good about just like flipping things over, because that's not really a mathematical idea to just flip a thing over. We could multiply this side by y and this side by y. Okay. Now we cancel out this y. This y. So we get on this side we get 1. 1 equals y times <coughs> x minus 1 over x. And here, this is just the coefficient of y. 
And usually when the coefficient of y is a fraction, we'll just multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by x over x minus 1. And the other side by x over x minus 1. So x over x minus 1 equals y times 1. So y equals x over x minus 1. That works too. But instead of doing all that, we could also realize if two fractions equal each other, the reciprocals would have to equal each other. All right, let's turn in our homework, please. I'll just do it for you. Thank you. That's the best. I won't always do this. Sometimes I'll just keep it. Just have to Get down to the number eight thing. Put it under here. And then turn it back in. For no penalty. Okay. We're going to try a little thing. It's an approach invented by a guy. Named Dan Meyer. Showing you a picture here. Okay. So here's here's Dan Meyer's thing. Uh, you know, he's a, he researches math education, and uh, and he brings up this point. When you read a problem in a book, which is well, for a long time, it's been the best way to give you learning stuff, learning resources. Okay. Um, but the problem is, uh, like, I'll show you a picture like this, and then, you know, it's on text, it's on paper, so I have to then write next to it, ask you questions about these pictures, uh, and then uh, also, I might have to interpret these pictures for you to, to kind of help you along, um, and help you to see how we can apply these pictures to what we're learning. So the problem with that is it, it, leaves, it leaves out this big piece to what he calls three-act math. Uh, it, it puts all the acts in one place. Like if, if you watch a play or a movie, you see act one, act two, act three. That's the way it works. Um, but in a, if, if you put it just in a picture, in a book, in one place, there isn't that. It's all in one place. Act one, two, and three are all in one spot, and you're seeing it all at once. Okay? So act one is you look at a thing, right? a picture, a video, and then you, you ask yourself something about these pictures or this video or this whatever. Okay? So we ask questions about it, and that's act one. Okay? So we're at act one right now. So the thing we're doing right now is asking questions about these pictures. I'm going to just write because I think people are having trouble seeing these. I didn't even know there was numbers in there. Yeah, so that's the Is that digital a four reader. or a nine below? That's a four. Okay. So now we, we look at these. Uh, 
pictures and we start asking questions. What questions can we ask about the picture? What if you yeah okay if you didn't know what the pictures were of the first obvious question would be what are these pictures of what what do they mean right uh, and so what's the answer to that question what what is uh, this yeah have you seen the water fountain mm -hmm. I took pictures on well when did I take the first picture September September seventeenth and the last picture the second picture yesterday. yesterday. So I took those pictures on those days, and uh, what is the significance of this number? How many water bottles or something, right? How many water bottles? How many water bottles something? we saved or we save, something you know. like Everybody's that? Everybody's so like, whatever. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I, I had Keenan in here yesterday. He, he sounded like, whatever about it. I was like, you don't think that's very cool? He's like, no, I just throw my trash in the river. <laughs> He doesn't do that. He's not like that. Very eco-conscious. Um, so yeah, that, it, it's information. It, it, to say the least, it's information. Uh, supposedly, we've saved that many bottles from it ending up in a landfill or whatever, being recycled. Um, OK, so now we know. What's that? We saved 2,000 bottles in that little time. Well, what this is. It's just always counting, right? always adding a, one bottle for, for every time you, I think it's 24 ounces of the bottle. But we don't know that from these pictures, so we won't, we won't try and assess that. Um, but this is how many bottles have been saved since the day it was installed, which was sometime in the summer. Right? So from sometime in the summer up until uh, September 17th, just a little while ago, we had saved this many. It kept on counting and kept on counting and kept on counting. And then by October 2nd, we had gotten to a number of 4,655. Right? And if we go out there and look at it today, it'll be about 4,655. And on it goes. Okay. Um, all right. So, so we know those things. We know what these are pictures of. We know what 9, nine uh, slash 17 and 10 slash 2 mean. All that kind of stuff. What other kind of questions can we ask? How do we save more bottles during the summer? How do we? Yeah, how did, like, it was like 2,800, but like. Well, this isn't the, like day one of school, 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 right? Yeah. Uh, there was people. Uh, yeah, like yeah, I know, but it was like, like it's just weird that there's a lot more people in school right now. Well, this is, all, this. there was also school before the 17th of September. Yeah. We started school yeah. in the 4th of, yeah. of September. September. It's okay. okay. Um, and it, it was here for quite a, like in the middle of the summer, and there were people working here. I yeah, it, yeah, I knew that. I was just saying it's weird. I was just thinking different. <laughs> um, now that is a question we could ask and we could theorize about it, but it's not a question. Is it a question we can answer? No, we can only theorize about it. No, I was it. just saying it was weird. It is weird. Yeah. But I am pointing out, like, we do want to ask, we, we want to ask all the questions that we feel like asking. And then we want to think, can we answer those questions? That's not putting down your question or anything like that. So, what's another question we could ask? that we can ask. It's not obvious that, uh, is that answerable? Yes. Okay, why don't you uh, work a, a, a minute or so and answer that question. It was gonna get asked. I was pushing you that way. Question we're asking is how many how many bottles a day are we saving?
30 days in September. 30 days past September. What? April, June, and November. I never remember that one. Do you, yeah, that's what I do. Why do you is the same? Yeah, I guess it's the same. I do the knuckles. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, September. And all the knuckles are 31 days. In between the knuckles, it's not. Which means July and when you come back August, both those months have 31. That's the answer. <laughs> Have a per day yet? Garrett? Uh, 122.133 repeating. 122.133 123 repeating. repeating bottles <laughs> per day. something we call a rate, right? We have lots of rates. Can you think of other rates that we use? Miles per hour. Miles per hour. Meters per gallon. Meters per gallon. Why not? Miles per gallon. We do miles per gallon if we're talking about gas, right? Uh, whatever you do. Anything for anything. People per square mile. When might you wonder about people per square mile. Population. population, not only population, but density. Where are you learning these words? From your head? That's awesome. Right? So we have, how many people do we have in Montana? I don't know. Just over a million people. Now, is a million people a lot of people? No. Come on, is a million people a lot of people? Yes. 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 Not for an entire state, the fourth largest state by surface area in the U.S. So no, it's not a lot of people. So we're talking about density here. We're talking about a rate. And I think it's something like 12 people per square mile. Nice. Really? Yeah, that's good. Of course, that's not what it's like in everyday life. There's a lot more than 12 people, and this isn't even a square mile here in this room, right? It's not how we live our lives. Well, we don't live here. Huh? We don't live right here, though. Well, you live in houses, which are definitely lots of houses per square mile, which is more than 12. But if we spread everybody out, give everybody equal space, and marked off 12, or a square mile, we can find 12 people in that square mile. Square mile is big. 12 people. Anyway, interesting tidbit. So just over a million people is a lot of people, but not for a whole state. But if it's in a really small place, that's still the same amount of people, it's just more dense. Anyway, enough of my ranting. So now we know how many bottles per day. Uh, could we ask like how like what what this says right now? Like what does this this uh, meter say right now at this moment? This was from yesterday. So about how much would it say right now, Michael? What time did you take? That is relevant, right? I don't know. I can't remember. I think this one was around lunchtime, and this one was like first period. It should be at 4,777. Right? And will it be? Is it likely that it's right there? No. Right? You just added 122, right? Assuming we're just going to add a day. Um, do you think it'd be more or less based on this average since I took this at first period yesterday? Well, it's it's almost lunchtime so now. So almost had like two days. Well, not two days. Had a day and a few hours. Okay. So we're thinking probably more. Yeah. yeah. Someone want to go check? I do. Yeah. Yay! The trip. Wow. What number are you looking for? <laughs> Which the, one was it? Was it one down there? Or was it one down there? Yeah. Well, that's, that's this one closer. This has to come back with the actual number, oh, doesn't she? 
Just go get the yeah, number. Yeah, go, go, remember go the number. Come back. Just go look at the number. Right there. Write it yeah. down. Don't mess up. Don't, Don't mess it up. Go! I guess four The one by Kuchel's? Yes. To yeah. the right of Kuchel's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's going to go look at that. What are we expecting to find? 4,777. 4,777. Oh, that's, that's cool. Awesome. I'm going to guess so. 4,790. Okay. If you make your own guesses in your mind, what do you think she's going to come back with? She left. She left me. Quite a bit more. Yeah. Now that's kind of what we expected, right? About there. We weren't expecting him to get something like 5,000, whatever, because we did use some data uh, and, and found about that. But it is, it is a bit more than we were expecting, right? That's almost an entire day's worth more, more than we thought it would be. What's that? I think it probably is. So that was the average off of that water. Or this one, there's one over here, right? Yeah, that one. There's, there's only an average for that water. Did you take a picture of the same water bottle? The one that was in the shop, right? Yeah. Especially for water bottles. Yeah. Oh, I want to go all around the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, what else could we ask? We just asked ourselves, you know, like, how many bottles would we expect to see a day after this day? Could we ask other questions like that? Yeah. Like what? How many were there before that date? How many were there before that date? Or maybe when was it? When was it a certain number? Yeah, when was it maybe installed? When was it installed maybe? Let's try uh, January 1st, okay? On January 1st, oh, when will we, how many bottles will we expect to be used by then? Mm. Oh, what? A lot. Let's figure out how many. Don't cry about it, yes? Can you get your phone out for the calendar? Uh, yeah, sure. Get your phone out for the calendar. Will you tell me what you get with your calendar? How many days that is? No, don't make him do the work. Yeah. There's 30 days in September, 31 in October, 30 in November, 31 in December. Wait, we're doing September. Huh? Yeah, we're going from September all the way to January. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just telling you a date. Are we starting from today? Or from this? How many were the line? January 1st is what I'm saying. How many water bottles? How many, bottle, how many water bottles will we expect to, that meter to read? So you have the information you have. When you 
count the days. So are we going off that number or the number she just got? We'll go over that. We'll go with that one. Okay. Because that's where we got 122. Put our, uh, I don't want to call them guesses, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, Assumption. Well, I'm assuming it's calculated. Okay. But, uh, our results. Let's put our results. Okay, 16,000. What? 13. 13. Okay. Don't let that pollute your mind. What you get? 14,884. Michael? Fifteen thousand six hundred thirty-five. Yeah. Sixteen thousand five hundred more. Alright. At least four of these have to be wrong. Okay. And maybe all five. So we just get like a. So we're gonna do just go check. like to tell us how they got their number of the people who told us what their number was. Well, I counted the days, and that was 122, uh, and then I times that by 122, okay. and then I got that. Okay. How about, uh, we'll go back to counting the days. Anybody count a different number of days? Yeah. 91 days. 91 days? Yeah, I got, yeah, I got 90. 90, 90 91. 90, 91. I got 90. Uh, what? 140. You got what? How many, Amy? 92, 91, 90. For sure it's around 90, somewhere in there. There's 30 days in November, I think. November? Yeah, and then there's 31 December. Yeah. Oh, and I counted January. Oops. Wow. January 1st. Right. <laughs> okay. So that's yeah. since when? Since. I was counting from, from including today is what I counted. From today, oh, including yeah. today. So really from yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Counting today as one day. Yeah. One day later. Okay, one day after yesterday. Uh, okay, so if that if we count that, then um, yesterday, that was the second. So we got 31 days in this month minus those two. So we got 29 plus 30 plus 31 plus 31. Plus 31. Plus, plus one more. Do we have to plus January one? Yeah. Or are we checking it like morning, January first, like the end of the day? What are we doing here? Well, we're we're, if we stop we're making our, some assumptions. If we stop on the thirty first. Yeah. People uh, can still do it after school. So we have to go in the morning of the first. So we'll go all the way to, to ninety two. Yes. Ninety one. Ninety one. Who got ninety two? You got ninety two. I got ninety two. Let's try to get closer to the right flow. So 28 days left in, in October, right? 20, 29 days, plus another 30. Well, we'd be checking it this class period on, the, on January 1st. Oh, it's 90. Right now? Huh? Yeah, 91. 91. Yeah. 91. 29 plus 30 plus 31 plus 1 is equal to 91. Okay, we'll go with 91. 91 days. I won't remember. All right, 91 days. Days. What do we do with 91 days? Oh, by uh, what? Now, what, where did we get 122? Okay. Yeah, that's bottles per day. Yeah. And where did we get to? You, you, you okay. calculated it, right? Yeah. Probably several of you did. How did, what numbers did you divide to get that? Uh, did, you, well, did you write that down? Anybody write yeah, that down? Yeah, it was uh, 1,832 divided by 15. Thousand number of days. One twenty-two point one three repeating is what we've gotten in two other classes. So probably right. Um, so we got bottles that's per day. That's the difference of bottles, and that's the amount of days. Yeah. Okay. So if we use this number, it's more exact than one twenty-two point one three, right? And it's still the rate. It's not a daily rate, but it's still the same rate. 
right? If it's 122.13 for every day, then it would be this many every 15 days. This one's just more exact. It's the rational number, uh, the fraction that represents this decimal. Okay, so we'll multiply those together. The day units will cancel each other out. What does that tell us? Up to that point, what do we, what do we know? From, well, from yesterday, yesterday until the first of January. So that's just how many bottles we save until then. Yeah. And then what do we do with that? Add 4,655. Four, 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 okay. Well, 4,000. This? Uh, that's bottles. Okay, so we have days canceled. Now we have this many bottles plus this many bottles. Should be how many bottles we should expect to see on the meter on January 1st. Okay. Are we kind of assuming a lot of things here? Yeah. That we'll be here on the first? No. Uh, we have, don't we have New oh, Year's off? Week, weekends too. And weekends, we're not here on the weekends. And there's other holidays between now and then. There's but two that, days in this month also, where... There's also uh, weekends in those 15 days. There's also, yeah, so that... So we can't count that. Well, couldn't we also say that that average kind of take some weekends into account, so that might yeah. might be an okay yeah, average so like to, to run over all uh, weekends. Yeah, there's Christmas break and stuff. Yeah, there's Christmas break, there's, there's also like Saturday Thanksgiving. volleyball games. There's what? Saturday but then you have things that happen on weekends, so that might kind of... People throw their water bottles out yeah. a lot. So, there's a lot to take into account. This isn't an exact, uh, you know, number, right? We're not going to see that exactly uh, on that day, but we should expect to see something close to that. Uh. Can you put like a reminder on your computer so that day is uh, What, on the January 1st? We won't be here. Oh, no. Well, wait. I'll come to the school, Carl. All right. So, January 1st. Uh, how many bottles then, by, by this calculation? Uh, 11,113. 11, 11, so we're all How do we get to something like 14,000, 15,000, 16,000? No, that's the answer, though. January. That's well, I mean, you 14. did get, you got this one? No, I got 14. 14? I mean, I would expect the yours to be higher than that. Wait, so that's the actual answer of that? Let's, let, let's grab my calculator, let's see. I just added it up and it was 15,000. Oh, oh, Abby. Oh, Oh, okay. one, Was I wrong? I don't know, maybe. 1,832 divided by 15 and then times 91, times 91 plus 4,655. Oh, I, I think didn't, you didn't I add didn't the 4,655. Oh. Yeah. So 15,769. I'll check it out. We had 15,635. That was me. Close. Close. Uh, also, 16,013 wasn't far off. That was me. Not far off. Me and Carl disappeared. That yeah. was probably a matter of using like 90 or 90. Well, I added like our estimated that was today. Oh. To use the fact that was today. I got it. All right, so we can do that for 91 days out. What if we wanted to do 100 days out? Uh -huh. no. Could we do it? Yeah. yeah. We could do it. How would we do it? The Just same way. Place 100 for the day. Place 100 for the days. You take out 91 and put it 100. Yep. Right? Figuring out what day that is might be, you know, a little hard. What if we want to do 200 days out? Sure. Sure? 300? Sure. What are we doing here? What is the only thing that we're switching out? The number of days. The number of days. So, what if we did this? 18,332 over 15 times the number of days, x, plus 1,655 equals, what does that equal? Uh, y. y, something that we don't know yet, right? That's why we use x and y, two different things we don't know. But when we know x, we can plug x in and then it'll tell us what y is. What kind of an equation is this? Uh, 
class is gone is What's that? Nothing. Okay. Standard. The standard standard is a x plus b y equals c. Slope intercept form. So this is a linear equation. In slope intercept form. Oh yeah, because that's m x plus b. Yeah. So what? What is this? The slope. M, the slope. Which is the slope and b y the y intercept, right? So that's what we're doing. We're kind of taking this to be our y-intercept, our day. Which day is this? It is, it, like, day, is it day five? Day what? Day 15? According to this equation? Wouldn't that be day one if it's the y-intercept? Is it day one? It's actually day zero, right? Oh, it would be from that exact second. Right. Right. From day zero, if we call this day zero. Sure. Yeah. Ground zero, patient zero, day zero. Right? You heard that, that term before? Yes. Where it all started. Okay. So we're writing equations of lines here. Um, to write a linear equation, we need some information. Would you agree? Yep. Uh, yeah? I hope so. Yeah. Yes. Yep. We need information about the line. Right? We, we just created an equation that we could graph it. It would be a line. And we could look along that line and see the number of bottles of water being saved going up as the days go by. Um, so... What kind of information do we need about a line? Well, what kind of information do we need about a line to draw a line? Slope. slope? Y Just y the slope? Yeah. And a y-intercept. If I told you that the slope was 2 and the y-intercept was 6, could you write an equation of a line? Yes. What would it look like? Like a 2x. what? 2x. 2x. I'll admit my hearing is not. I tell my daughter that all the time. No, because she talks really quietly in the back seat of the car with the veggie tails on. <laughs> okay. Okay, how about we have the slope, but we don't have the y-intercept. What if I just give you a point? Could you draw the line if I gave you a point and the slope? Any point at all and the slope? Probably. Yeah, you go to that point, go up and over, rise over run, and draw another point. So that should be enough, enough information to, to uh, write an equation to. Right? Okay, so what if I told you that the point was 3, 4, and the slope was uh, 3 over 7? That should be enough information to write the equation, right? Okay. But we can't just plug in m and b. Right? We don't have b, we have some other point. So if we're going to try to write down this equation, what information do we have? about the equation of this line. Um, we have M. Do we have B? No. Can we just plug in 4 for B? No. no, because this would have to be a 0, right? 0 comma 4 would be the line or something. Well, we, we must have some more information about this line that we can plug into this equation. A specific x and a specific y. So now 4 equals y equals m x, or not that's that's m times x plus b. We can solve for b, right? I hope so. 4 equals 9 sevenths plus b. Uh, 4 minus 9 sevenths equals b. Uh, let's see, we got. Um, 28 sevenths minus 9, 19 sevenths equals b. So we put that guy right back in there. We got y equals 3 sevenths x plus 19 sevenths. Isn't that something? Isn't that fantastic? You feel good about yourself? You should. 
So I got slope and y-intercept? Got it. You nailed it. We can write that equation. Point and a slope? You can write that equation. How about like in number uh, um, <clears throat> 21? Give you a point, right? We've done that before. I've given you a point. Okay. And then what I tell you is there's this other line. This other line, y equals negative x plus 3. And I'll tell you that the line that goes through 7, 1 is parallel to that line. Knowing that it's parallel to this line, does that tell you anything about the line that we were talking about? Slope is what? The same as this line. So what's the slope of this line? And they're parallel, so this one has a slope of? Negative 1. And then, point and slope again. What if they were perpendicular? Would they be the same slopes? Opposite? Opposite reciprocal. So instead of negative 1, it would be positive 1 over 1, which is positive 1. Okay. What a thing. What a thing. Okay. Just one more quick thing. 2.5 is uh, it's just like a, a subset of linear equations. It's a subset of linear equations. So here is slope intercept form. Slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus 2. If B equals zero, we have something called direct variation. But if B equals zero, that's gone. Y just equals mx. For direct variation, we, uh, for some reason, don't use M anymore. We use A. So what's the y-intercept of this line? Zero. Zero. So all direct variation equations look just like this. Y equals A times x, nothing else, plus zero. So if I were to go to graph this, where would this definitely, we don't know a, a ton about it, but we do know definitely one place it goes through. Where does it go through? Zero, zero. Zero, zero, the origin. Definitely goes through there. All direct variation uh, equation, well, graphs of all direct variation equations go go through the origin. So it's just a line that goes through the origin, really. And all you need is the slope. Okay. I'm going to say what I just said, I'm going to say it in a different way. So that I'm just going to you organize that stuff. So if I say y varies, varies directly with x, the definition of that statement is not complicated. The definition of that statement is y can be written in an equation with x like this. y equals your constant of variation your constant of variation times x. So if y varies directly with x, they're just saying that this is the style of equation that relates y and x. So if I tell you that x equals 3 and y equals 9, if that's all I tell you then, and I tell you it's a point on a line, that's, that's nice, but I don't know the slope. I don't know the y-intercept. I can't write the equation of this line. But if I say they vary directly, right, and uh, x and y vary directly, that's significant. Now, what am I? What am I also saying? Nine equals a times three. That's exactly what I'm saying. So what is a? Three. A equals three. So what's the equation that relates? y and x, what's the equation of this line? y equals 3x. It's 
It's basically like saying the, the y-intercept is always a given. What's the y-intercept? Zero. zero. The y-intercept is always zero. And if two things vary directly, they have to be related by y equals ax. This has to be the style of the equation that relates the two. Okay. So if you can't multiply x by a number and get y consistently within a set of data, you don't have direct variation. You have something else. So I think that's all you need. Are there any questions about anything so far?